Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about constipation and stimulating that one nerve that can eliminate constipation forever. So let's get right into it. Constipation, stimulating that one nerve, and that one nerve is called the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is a cranial nerve, and there's 12 of them, and the vagus is number 10. Tenth cranial nerve is one of the longest and innervates the entire digestive tract, the heart, the lungs, all the abdominal viscera, muscles of the pharynx, soft palate, larynx, which is responsible for what? Speaking and swallowing. Okay? Now, it's important to understand when you have the brain, the entire brain, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, right? All the parts of the brain will fire 90% of the output through the brainstem where cranial nerve 10 lives. So it can inhibit or stimulate the vagus nerve in the brainstem by having proper brain function. So one of the clinical signs is if you have a bad brain or neurodegeneration, it could impact the vagus nerve, okay? Now, what does it do? The vagus impacts balance of the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The vagus is parasympathetic. It's the rest and digestion nerve. Clinical signs. Lack of uh, fatiguing when you do a gag reflex. So when a patient comes in, we'll have them go, ah, 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 we'll put a tongue depressor right in the back of the throat, uh, um, stimulating a gag reflex, right? If the patient has a lack of that gag reflex or fatiguing of the gag reflex, you might get the gag reflex once or twice, but the third one it doesn't exist. So the diminishing fatigability of the gag reflex is a clinical sign and symptom. Difficulty swallowing, right? I said it pharynx, soft palate, and larynx, it's part of swallowing. If you have difficulty swallowing, it could be a clinical sign. Gastroparesis, inability to digest your foods at, at a normal rate or normal transit rate. GI problems, constipation, big one. Anxiety, because it's parasympathetic and sympathetic. If you don't have parasympathetic function or proper parasympathetic function, you're going to have anxiety. You're always in that fight or flight mode. Uvula. So when you open your mouth, there's this little thing hanging down right in the middle of your throat. Okay, That is called the uvula. And it will deviate away from the damaged side. So if you see the uvula and it shifts to my left, it's shifting away from the damaged side, right? The weak vagus nerve. Okay. Also, if you have Parkinson's disease, Lewy body dementia, or neurodegeneration, it can also impact the vagus nerve, like we said over here. Okay? Now, how do we stimulate it? How do we correct this problem? There are four methods that you can utilize at home in order to stimulate the vagus nerve. Number one is gargle vigorously. So you can't just go and go, oh, and then just spit out the water. What you need to do is you get a tall glass of water and you take a big gulp and you gargle vigorously. You might want to do it over a sink, in the shower, whatever. But it has to be vigorous. It can't just be just this little, uh, it has to be very strong. And to the point, maybe your eyes might tear a little bit. That's how strongly you want to be able to do that. You want to sing out loud like that crazy person in the car. You want to sing in the car, singing your, as loud as you can in the car, and people look over and go, who's that crazy person next to me, right? That's how you want to sing. Gagging, brushing your teeth and hitting the back of the tongue to elicit a gag reflex. You want to gag a few times to the point where your eyes tear, okay? So gagging is very important. Eyes must tear up. That's how you know you stimulate the vagus nerve. Okay. Number four, coffee enemas. Coffee enemas will distend the intestine, 
stimulating the vagus nerve. It also will stimulate the, what we call the cholinogenic receptors, right? And that will increase the bowel function or bowel movement. So when you do coffee enemas, what you want to do is get organic coffee. You want to seep it and then cool it down, obviously, to room temperature. And then you have to get one of these little kits for enemas. And you want to lie on your right side and do the enema in the bathtub. You want to hold the enema as long as you can. So some people, the first time, it can only be one or two minutes. Sometimes you can hold it for 10 minutes. So you hold it as long as you can until you get that urge that you have to go. That's when you want to get up and get on the toilet. All right. So you want to start in the bathtub because people make mistakes. So coffee enema is a great way to stimulate the vagus nerve. So those are the four things you can do. Now, obviously, there are other things you can do to stimulate the vagus nerve. One is deep belly breathing. Take a breath in, let's say three seconds in. But instead of using your diaphragm where you're breathing like this, what you want to do is push your belly out. So when you breathe deep, push your belly out and then let it out slowly. So you can do it a couple of different ways. What we call box breathing, where it takes three seconds to breathe in, hold for three seconds, and then breathe out for three seconds. And you repeat that cycle for, let's say, a minute or two, multiple times throughout the day. Another way you can do it is you take a deep breath, belly breathing again. Let's say it takes three to four seconds to breathe in. You slow down your breath and breathe out for six to eight seconds. So if you breathe in three, breathe out six. If you breathe in four, breathe out eight seconds. That's how you want to stimulate that. Another easy one you can do is use a hot pack over your abdomen. Okay, that'll help stimulate it. You can also do a massage of the abdomen and the neck. You can do kind of the base of the neck and behind the ears to stimulate that nerve. Another great way to do it is chiropractic care. Someone who's very skilled at upper cervical adjustments or hitting the atlas and occiput area, chiropractic care can be very uh, effective in that. There are some things uh, called transcranial stimulation where you can put things on your ear and, and do stimulation, but that's a little bit more complicated. In the clinical setting, there will have uh, there'll be doctors who will use a neurostimulator. You can put it on your tongue and that will stimulate back and into the vagus nerve. So that's another way to stimulate the vagus nerve. At the end of the day, you want to be able to be more parasympathetic. You want to be able to rest, relax, so you can have your normal digestion, bowel movements, etc. It's a great way to see if it will help with constipation. Obviously, if you have other issues like food sensitivities and GI inflammation, you need to handle those um, conditions. But this is one easy way to do this at home and see if it can impact constipation forever. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.